those of you who are uh, familiar with my videos have seen this background before and probably assume that it's a, a bench top that I work off of but actually it's not a bench top at all it's well it is a bench top but it's also uh, an anodizing setup um, I've always wanted to be able to do my own anodizing since I, I make a lot of aluminum parts and it's nice it would be nice to be able to do them yourself rather than drag them off to an anodizer and pay money for a few parts so uh, I don't have much room around here so I kind of been uh, putting it off but last summer I had this idea about uh, building a bench to enclose the anodizing setup and uh, that's what I did I put together this wooden bench with a uh, hinged lid on it so you just open the lid up and all the anodizing setups inside this bench okay all the tanks and there's a uh, storage area or a, like a shelf underneath to hold all the electronic stuff um, there's a 20 volt 30 amp power supply DC power supply and there's a controller that I built to keep track of all the temperatures of all the tanks and control the uh, the air that goes in them for uh, mixing and uh, turn on various tanks according to what color I want to do um, all that stuff goes under there there's there's an aquarium pump somewhere in there and I haven't used it a whole lot yet but when I have used it it's worked really well so I thought uh, since I, I, I posted the build thread on this thing on a couple a couple forms and I've had a lot of requests to see the thing in action so I got a part I'm gonna anodize this morning so I thought I'd uh, clue you in on it and show, show you how it's done how it's used so uh, let's get this thing fired up basically the, the controller has uh, three temperature um, controllers in it to one's one controls the temperature of the uh, um, cleaner there's a cleaner bath in there another one controls the temperature of all the uh, the uh, dye baths and the third one although it's not being used right now a third one is in the anodizing bath itself and it will be hooked up to a, a chiller because in the summertime the, the bath heats up and, and it has to be maintained the temperature has to be, be maintained between 70 and 75 degrees so on a hot summer day I'm going to need to put some kind of a chiller in here to keep the temperature down on the anodizing bath. So, uh, well, basically these tanks have uh, have uh, heaters in them, resistance heaters. And see what see them down in the bottom there, and uh, I have the heaters. Like I think this is 2,000 watt heater and I can't turn all the tanks on at once because I draw more current than my my shop has, the capacity of my shop, so I have to switch between tanks and only turn the ones on I'm going to use, so that's 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 why I built this controller. Uh, there's also uh, well, a temperature probe that goes into the tanks so the temperature of the bath gets maintained. This one I think is uh, 145 degrees and the sealer is 165 degrees and the, bath, the baths are all 145 degrees they have a, a black dye bath here obviously and a blue one and I have I have dyes for other colors as well but, as well, but I don't have them set up yet so I have, I have room for future expansion um, this one is the uh, cleaner bath it cleans all the oil and uh, you know fingerprints and stuff off the parts before you start this one's a uh, caustic etch bath it's just lie a lye solution if you want you can put a you can just do a quick dip and get any last traces of oil off that the detergent mixed or you can leave them in leave the parts in there for a longer period of time and it'll actually etch the surface and make like a satin finish uh, this tank is a 15 percent solution of uh, Sulfuric, sulfuric acid, basically uh, battery acid, has some aluminum electrodes in it, um, and basically you hook a, a DC current up to your part, and it's kind of like an electroplating setup. It uh, it creates a uh, um, oxide finish on the part, aluminum oxide, basically, and that's that's your anodizing. And once you get the part anodized, you put it in a, a bath or a dye bath 
and dye the anodized coating whatever color you want and then you put it in a sealer which uh, seals everything up so uh, let's get this thing heated up it takes about 20 minutes or a half hour to heat up so we'll, we'll get it started I'm gonna be doing black this morning so I'll turn on the black bath and you can see all the air the bubblers are on now so we keep the solution stirred up and that's about all there is to it for now as soon as it gets heated up we'll we'll start up again and we'll I'll show you how to anodize a part okay it looks like the dye is up to temperature the uh, sealer is still climbing so I don't need to worry about that because that has some time before I need to use that so let's get uh, let's get the part set up here Okay, first thing you need to do when you anodize something is make an electrical contact with it. So I just use a aluminum welding rod and force it into, into a hole in the part just so it makes good electrical contact. Then I just hang it on a... Uh, we, we don't need electrical contact now, we're just cleaning, but when we get to the anodizing part we will. So I have this uh, bar, I just hang the part into the uh, tank and then hook a hook a wire up to it for the to carry the current. So right now we're just going to put it in here for 20 minutes and let it get clean. This is just a strong detergent solution at 145 degrees. It does a really nice job of cleaning all the oils off. You can see it bubbling. In fact, probably should turn the bubbler on. Remember which one it is. There we go. See the bubblers just there's a PVC uh, pipe in the bottom of the tank with a bunch of holes drilled in it, and that's hooked up to an aquarium pump, and it just pumps air through it just to keep the solution churning around so we don't get a stagnant area around the part. So we'll just let that go for for 20 minutes, and then we'll. Uh, get it into the anodizing bath. Okay, so I lied, it was only five minutes, not 20. It's been a while since I've done this. So, uh, next thing in line, after it gets through with the cleaner, is to rinse. I use a, an external rinse system. I have a bucket of tap water to rinse the part, do, the, do a rough rinse, and then as a finish rinse to get any minerals off from the water, I use distilled water before it goes into the next bath, just so I don't carry any, leave any minerals left on the part, which will stain it, and make sure nothing gets carried from batch to batch. Rinsing's critical because that's the quickest way to kill batch of chemicals is to carry something in from from a neighboring tank. When you rinse you can also tell uh, how clean the part is because the water will sheet up on a clean part and will beat up if there's any oil. So it's a good, good way to see, uh, make sure your part's clean. Okay, now I'm just going to do a quick dip, maybe uh, 15 seconds or so in the, in the lye sodium hydroxide just to make sure that it get all the oil off. You can see it's starting to foam up a little bit as it etches the surface. Okay, nice and clean. We'll do another rinse. Tapped holes are the hardest thing to 
get rinsed out. So really spray, spray the distilled water in those, make sure they're all cleaned out. I don't want to carry any lye solution into my into my uh, anodizing tank with the acid. Alright, let's see here. Okay. Okay, now the acid, or the, uh, the anodizing tank, um, you have to uh, anodize your part at a, a rate of 12 amps per square foot. In other words, if you have a square foot of part and you apply 12 amps to it, it takes, it takes one hour to anodize the part. So I've, I've calculated the area in this part, it's about 0.66 square feet. So I, I, I anodize the part for an hour, but not at the full 12 amp rate. I anodize it at 6.6 at at, uh, 6 .6 amps instead because of the smaller surface. So let's just turn on the uh, turn on the power supply and adjust the amperage to 6.6 .6 amps. And we should see some action going on here shortly. Okay so I just had a, a minor surprise. I haven't used this in a couple months and I see that my anodes have eroded away inside the tank so I wasn't getting any current flow through the part. So I put a uh, temporary anode, anode in here, just an aluminum plate to uh, serve for this part so I can get it uh, anodized and then I'll have to replace the original anodes. So I'll turn on the current, adjust the amperage for my about 7 amps and you should see some action going on in the part here. All right, starting to see a little bit of bubbles coming off the part. So we have current flow. So now it's just a waiting game. Turn on some agitation and we'll wait around for an hour. And then I will go ahead and uh, rinse it, put it into the black dye for another, uh, I think, uh, 15 minutes, if I remember correctly. I'll have to check. And then, then we'll seal it. So uh, I'm going to go do something else while I'm waiting. <clears throat> okay, it's been about an hour. I let it run a little longer because of the mix up I had at the beginning, figuring out what was going on. So let's see what it looks like, okay? It looks like an anodized part. It's uh, taking on a little yellowish tinge. That's the indication that it's taking the anodizing so let's uh, rinse it off and uh, get it into the dye sulfuric acid is really sticky it likes to stick to the parts so you really have to do a good job rinsing so you don't carry any over into the dye because that'll kill the dye really fast any any acid gets carried into it. Get it in the dye. This will take about uh, 10 minutes or so. Turn a little air on to get it circulating and let it die. What happens is the uh, pores, the part's hot, so the pores in the anodizing are wide open now. So the dye 
soaks into the surface of the uh, anodizing into the pores. And then when we're done to this, we'll put it in the sealer and that'll close up the pores and lock the dye in. So we'll see what it looks like in 10 minutes. All right, let's see how we did here. Looks black. Rinsed off and into the uh, sealer. Sealer is, uh, I think, about 10 minutes. So we'll let it go for 10 minutes, dry it off, and see what it looks like. Okay, let's see how we did here. Black to me once I get all the, uh, the water off. Should be good to go. That's all there is to anodizing.